Welcome everybody. In this video, I'll start going deeper into NEO's path to autonomous driving and what's the company doing in that area. So if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and so you won't miss out on the future videos. And maybe you already watched a couple of videos on this channel before, but you haven't subscribed yet. Also, please make sure to hit the like and subscribe. So I'll see you in future videos about this topic. Now, before I give you a summary of what was presented by Rin Shaoqing at Tech Day about their strategy of autonomous driving and their tech approach and so on, let me first explain a bit of context of my own personal experience. So first of all, I've experienced Neo Pilot from the very beginning in China when the first platform model cars were rolled out and had this um, yeah, ADOS functionality of testing that one in China and then of course I became an early adopter of the Neo ET7 first in Germany uh, so that is of course the NT 2.0 platform cars with the latest hardware in the cars so that's the Atom computer with the Nvidia Orange chips that you possibly are well aware of and in Germany or Europe I've been using the Neo Pilot for long trips for cross-country trips and in the latest update that was just pushed hours ago I also saw a couple of improvements and in general I can see say that this is an advanced driver system that really helps to take a lot of stress off uh, the driver and for example if I go from Berlin down six hours on a drive um, I can basically 90% of the time let the car drive on its own and it will keep the lane automatically if I hit the indicator it will also overtake automatically um, and this one is going up to high speeds it's working at pretty bad weather in my experience automatic parking was particularly handy whenever I had to park in let's say parking garages that didn't have a lot of uh, space it's really working quite Quite flawlessly I have to say but of course these functionalities of what I have in Europe here are even in the latest version now less advanced than what I have witnessed in China so this year alone I went two times to China and I've seen also the progress within China at that point in time and of course also compared to my previous experiences of the NT 1.0 model and so on my latest trips I also had an experience with something called the NOP plus beta version so this is the most advanced version currently in China and that really already enables use cases in which the car takes you from A to B at certain defined roads. So that's not applicable everywhere but whenever you can activate it I can really say you can fully take your hands off actually legally not you are not allowed to do that um, however uh, you know the car manages everything from A to B it even overtakes automatically it does do the highway on ramp and off ramp and so on and so that is kind of the first kind of a glimpse of where things are going now on my last trip to China I actually tried also to get a first hand look onto what Neo wants to bring onto the cities uh, kind of a city pilot because at that point in time I also tested like the competitors like Huawei and uh, Axpong and so on and um, by that time they actually had already inner city uh, capabilities that were exceeding that of Neo right and I saw that there is a, a pilot happening uh, but I unfortunately couldn't get into that but now we get the first pictures or moving images emerging from a blocker called uh, Dong Mai Mai, which uh, by the way, I just met at this Neo AP event in Germany. And um, not only is he a really cool guy, but also thankfully he's uh, given us this footage of what appears to be um, more advanced inner city driving capabilities by Neo. So now it's time to actually jump into the presentation by Ren Chao Tsing, because that was actually one of the main messages um, that Neo is now playing planning to bring this NOP plus beta program from just those um, highways that are usually very selected highways into the city and more into urban areas. But that's already much too specific. Let's keep it a little bit more high level for this video because um, I think you know one positive about this NEO Tech Day that I have to say really is that NEO has started to go out and give presentations where they are more elaborating where the company is actually heading. And it's interesting to see that that wasn't picked up very much I have to say like this didn't make the, the word into lots of the English speaking press and possibly that's due to the reason that you know the entire presentation was in Chinese and 
frankly, even I had uh, troubles to, you know, get my hand onto the footage. I needed to use third party uh, software to download it, to make subtitles for it. And then I distributed to my patrons. So by the way, if you want the entire stream of more than two hours of a presentation by Neo, you can become a patron that helps to support this channel, but then you also get extra content like this. So uh, with this English subtitles, which are most of the time not perfect, it's possible to start understanding where Neo is actually going. And so my bottom line here is that it's great to see people like Ren Chao Ting, like this mastermind who has been one of the leading scientists behind actually image recognition and labeling and so on. So that's kind of the tools that every AI engineer out there for autonomous driving is actually using in other different fields as well. And he's working for Neo and he's the guy who has finally made it on stage because to be honest, he's like also very young, charismatic, um, you know, kind of a, a, a guy that you want to listen to and um, get your insights uh, firsthand from, right? And so regarding this presentation of what he actually showed, uh, let me maybe start from the back. So for NOP+, Plus, there are essentially two building blocks. One is generalization and the other one is road-based validation, enhancement and rollout operations. That's what has been presented by Ren Xiaoqing during this um, uh, tech day. And essentially, this is how NEO wants to bring what they currently have as NOP plus beta for selected streets onto more than 400,000 kilometers of roads that will be activated with these types of capabilities. There have been a couple of highlights in this presentation and some of them are more on the strategic and technical level. For example, here speaking about um, the compute power that NEO has um, like in the cloud or in their server systems. And this one is regarding training the algorithms, right? Um, so similar to what you would might say might be Tesla Dojo, um, NEO has also built their own data centers. And you may remember this from all of the um, fear around the US chip bans, right? That um, the US is limiting Chinese companies or China in general, I should say, um, to buying some of the highest performing chips but as I explained in my videos, um, those chips will still be accessible. First of all, they are hoarded by now and still accessible if they you know, just apply for it. And then there are even separate chipsets uh, sold by NVIDIA, which are specifically for China that have a little bit less bandwidth. But other than that, it's essentially the same chip. And in the future, we will see that these chips are actually being done um, self-engineered uh, by the Chinese companies. Uh, that will be the outcome of the whole chip war. But that's not the topic of this video. What I want to say here is NEO has now 1,400 petaflops of um, training compute power capabilities. And the system is able to train 10 petabits of data at the same time in its cache. So this is what can be put as a large um, model to train at the same time. And for this video, let's not get lost into the details. In the future, I will compare it more to what that exactly means and how it compares to other companies. Let me just say so much, it sounds like they're confident that this is performant enough to do what they need to do. And in order to do that, they have optimized both the software as well as the hardware. For example, pinning some of these GPUs together into a cluster and thereby achieving high efficiencies. So this compute power will be used in order to train the algorithms and models that will be um, without supervision. So he mentioned in this time explicitly that this is um, unlabeled data that is going in there. And therefore, this is maybe also a new step here for um, a more generalized AI approach here also by NEO in the past. This is largely what we have connected Tesla with, right? Uh, which of course with its Dojo program has the ambitions to, um, you know, come up with a general artificial intelligence model here because Ren Xiaoqing, he also gave us a fun hint that he said like, you know, we used these models and trained it. And then afterwards we we saw that they are actually even working within buildings and not only on, on roads. So in a way that is a confirmation of the work that Tesla is doing because it's confirming that they are doing the same thing and it's also seemed to be working. And at the same time, it might be a hint to what's coming in the future from Neo as well. I'm not sure if it might be like something like a Optimus robot there. Uh, I haven't seen something like that from Neo and I'm not sure how that would fit into the vision. However, they clearly stated that their models can now also be expanded to 
other areas. And so while they have not been uh, that explicit about it, this should be an interesting hint here. He then went on and also mentioned a couple of different um, algorithms and programs that they have established, for example, making the driving to appear more human-like. So also learning from the data which they get from the real human drivers and um, how they are interacting and so that the model is actually picking that one up to make it more um, realistic. And then he also showed some demonstration videos that are showing how this pure vision only just trained compute model is actually also performing on roads that are not um, HD mapped, so not mapped out systems that are usually used in the previous NOP plus beta versions of those highways that I've mentioned before, where A to B uh, uninterrupted drives um, fully autonomously um, are possible currently already. But as I mentioned before, now with this new approach, it will be possible to have such kind of a vision only based um, model as well from NEO. Again, this is something that we previously connected only to Tesla, but seems NEO is also going down that path. Now, this is kind of the generalization part, right? So this is about how this vision only system works um, based on without image labeling, training the algorithms and neural networks um, for generalized AI. And then on the other hand, what NEO is looking to do and has introduced here is optimizations on top of that, um, basically kind of a validation system here because NEO's approach is always also about not only freeing up time of the driver, but also the security or safety of a, of a, a feature here. And they are talking here about something called crowdsourcing AI. So they are using uh, essentially uh, parts of the hardware in the car. Uh, some of the chips, or usually those orange chips, had four chips in there. And um, it's possible to access some of this compute power within the car to do kind of a shadow mode. So meaning it's not interrupting any of the normal address functionalities of the user in the car. He doesn't actually noticing that this is happening, but the compute power can be accessed in order to verify uh, some of these uh, paths that are being driven here. So they are calling this swarm intelligence and by accessing the, the power of the, the car actually, which is quite massive. So for example, a Neo car has uh, around 10 times more compute power than a Tesla Model 3 on the hardware 3 currently. And um, Neo is saying they can access this power and that is generating more compute power on top of what they are doing for this generalization model in the cloud already. And so it wouldn't be Neo if it wasn't very user centric so the way they are thinking about rolling this out is an approach in which users in the app can actually start selecting some favorite routes which are not based on those high definition maps, but you know, rather urban areas um, and some pathways that currently are not enabled uh, to be driven just by the car on its own. And then it seems like uh, at some point these roads get voted upon and then will be kind of enabled for these type of validation systems in which um, the users themselves, not the Neo cars uh, like the test fleet and so on, uh, will actually go along those uh, kind of roads and help to validate uh, and also bring this more human-like behavior on these type of routes. And so this is how Neo is planning to roll out actually this feature coming from the highways more into the inner cities and the urban areas um, on these based routes that will be um, validated from time to time from the users. And then 100 roads, 1,000, 10,000 and so on will be enabled, bringing us to those hundred thousands of kilometers rollout plan that has been announced. Now there is of course much more detail to everything that I've just presented um, I will go more in depth in future videos as I've mentioned before. However, let me also give a couple of more thoughts from my side here, um, how I'm kind of judging these progresses and what Ren Xiaoqing has presented here. First of all, um, in those videos by Dong Mai Mai, we can see clear progress. I haven't seen anything like that before from Neo. And the fact that we now get these type of um, images and uh, footage is actually very, very good. In my point of view, I was trying to get my hands on something like this, uh, like being able to drive in a car in Shanghai at the time when I was there. Unfortunately, I couldn't get there. Hopefully next time I might have the chance to sit inside in a car and test one of these user roads. Um, but I think we can now expect more of that footage um, coming out from time to time 
from the users themselves. So this is something similar that we've seen with the FSD beta testing um, by Tesla users in the US, only that the approach is slightly different. Um, speaking of how it's different, well, first of all, I have to say that this may bring NEO on a next level here when it comes to their Adders technology. It still seems to be not the NAD rollout, so the you know the final stages of this development, but bringing NOP plus beta into the um, inner cities definitely will have lots of impact on the users. Um, because, for example, if you compare it to Tesla today, Tesla doesn't have these sorts of capabilities in China, there are still rumors whether or not Tesla might be able to offer FSD beta in China, but currently it seems to be stalled. I don't know when or how it's going to happen. Um, there might be regulatory issues. Who knows? Anyways, the fact is that, you know, already today the NOP plus beta on the highways, this is something um, at a level of accuracy and, um, you know, user experience that a Tesla cannot do in China. Um, they might be able to do that in the US um, where FSD clearly is advanced. If you look at some of the videos, However, in China, it seems really that Huawei, Xpeng um, and NIO have already progressed a little bit further here. And again, this will propel NIO into the next stage, which might actually even differentiate them uh, from uh, the likes of uh, Xiaopeng and Huawei and so on. Because first of all, this is the only Chinese maker um, that will be able to offer this also possibly globally. Um, that was also explicit in the presentation that they said these algorithms are supposed to work in Europe just as they are working in China. Again, this is going away from simply just HD maps onto a new approach. And as we know, Huawei doesn't have any cars in Europe. Um, Xpeng is not selling really. Neo is here, although in very limited um, numbers, of course, but this might then enable to go really global with such kind of um, NAD, NOP plus beta, however they will call it in Germany or Europe in the end, um, programs. Then, of course, it was an eye opener for me to learn about that they are speaking about the compute power, which they have both leveraging the cloud or the data centers, plus actually the fleet with the additional or idle compute power there. Um, and so that is also something, especially given in all of this chatter around US China relations and, you know, the tech uh, war and so on and the sanctions, uh, where I would say, you know, it's looking more and more realistic that um, companies like NEO won't be impacted at all by these uh, things because they are basically already today are working away around and have these capabilities just as any American company would have. And last but not least, on the actual capabilities, um, I think um, it doesn't look as much as advanced as I've seen uh, with some of the uh, Tesla FSD videos yet. But of course, this is very early stages, some of the first footage out there that we have seen. We will see how close they are to Tesla and if it can match quality or maybe even, you know, have something to show that the others don't have uh, in the future. But clearly this tech path outline here uh, was entertaining and exciting to watch in my point of view. And having those strong capabilities, uh, both on the hardware side with the cars, uh, the back end side and people like Ren Xing makes me quite confident about the fact that NIO could be really the Chinese company, the company that you want to own as a stock when it comes to having a share of such an approach of autonomous driving that is not dependent on HD maps, will work globally and is going this vision only plus verification approach. So that's it for now. Maybe a little bit to digest here. Thanks for watching. See you in my next videos.